in most cases, when you board an airplane, in most cases, the stewards start giving you uh, instructions. <laughs> They'll tell you where oxygen masks are, they tell you where exits are. And then one of the things they tell you before the plane take off is to do what? Buckle your seat belts. <laughs> Amen. I just feel pretty good this morning trying to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. I'll be found this morning in the book of, um, let's go to 1 Peter. Let's start there. The book of 1 Peter. I'm going to move around a little bit. Amen. I had some scroll. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's start in 1 Peter. Chapter 4. I know you probably think you know where I'm going. You don't. Amen. I'm not going to verse. I'm not going to 1 Peter 12. 1 Peter 4 and 12. I'm not going. I'm going to 1 Peter 4. And verse. Wait a minute. Anna. Is this 1 Peter 2? It must be 2 Peter. Pardon me. Wait a minute. I something ain't right. First Peter 4. Lord, you know why? <laughs> I'm in Timothy. <laughs> okay, first Peter 4. Mm. Let's uh yeah, let's start at 12. I want to try to make a point here. I didn't want to really go up there. I looked, looked at it, but anyway. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Are you there? Mm -hmm. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as, as, as though some strange thing happened unto you. It says, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. It says, If ye be uh, reproach for the name of Christ happy are ye for the spirit of the spirit of glory uh, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he's glorified it says but let none of you suffer as a murderer as a thief as an evildoer or as a busybody in other man's matters you see that it says yet if any man suffer as a Christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God on this behalf verse 17 said for but the time has come that judgment must begin where at the house of God and if it begin first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God and if any and if any and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and sinner appear wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit to get of God commit the keeping of their souls to him and well doing unto a faithful creator. Amen. I want to. I'll just stop there. Okay. And then we'll, we'll tie everything else together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you honor. We give you glory and we give you praise. God, I, I, I thank you this morning, God, for a new day we've never seen. God, God, we ask the Holy Spirit to have his way in this place. Father, we bind flesh in the name of Jesus. God sent forth the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy and also destroys the yoke. Father, we thank you, Lord, after your word has been preached. You'll confirm it with the signs following. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. I, I, I just want to take my time this morning. Um. My topic is going to be the judgment of God. The judgment of God. When you hear the word judgment, what comes to your mind? When you hear the word judgment, what comes to your mind? Because there's a lot of different, uh, I got a definition you know, I'll give you, but what, when you hear the word judgment, and it's okay to talk back to me. When you hear the word judgment, you know, uh, uh, what comes to your mind? Nobody? Okay, a sentence. Anybody else? A sentence. 
Okay, let me give you let me give you the definition. Judgment is a misfortune or calamity viewed as a divine punishment. Give it to you again. A misfortune or calamity. What's a calamity? Somebody said a disaster. Viewed as a divine judgment. So what God is actually wanting to, well, let, 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 let me do here. Let, let me get here. Uh, so judgment is when a decision or verdict has been passed down, resulting in a sentence. Okay. And most of us are familiar with a judge sitting on the bench of a case. And this will make it a little simpler. After all of the witnesses have testified and all the evidence have been presented, then the judge renders what? His decision. Okay? Okay? He's, he, he, rendered his, he rendered his decision. Well, it's the same way with God. He often allows us to plead our case and call our witnesses to testify on, his, on our behalf. And once the case has gone forth, then God renders his judgment. Once the verdict or decision has been passed down it's normally final whenever the person that has been charged don't agree with the verdict they have an option to what make an appeal go on somewhere with this now make an appeal after the appeal has been made then there is a new court date set and another trial is done but in our case somebody say in our case we don't make an appeal not against God Amen. When God passes down a judgment on us, it can't be reversed. All right. OK, now watch now. We have the option to repent mm. and then God will render another chance. But the judgment still has to come to pass. Is anybody out there? All right. And the thing that God want me to talk about this morning you know, I talked about the, I talked about uh, God is looking for commitment on last week. Remember? He brought that back to my mind and he says, you know, when we're uh, lukewarm, when we're in, in, in judgment, what causes some of the judgments of God to come? Not only sin. It's not always sin. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me take you back. Let me take you back just a little bit. Look at verse 15 of 1 Peter 4 and 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, evildoer, busybody, and other man's man. Those are that, that's just a list of things. Okay? That's a list of things now. Now what God began to show me was his wrong conduct, my behavior, can cause the judgment of God to come forth. Come on. Uh, 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 James 4.17 says, To him that knoweth to do good, and to do it not, it is sin. Okay? Now, let me, I, I, I'm trying to make this plain because I really studied this thing up. Now, when Peter began to talk about this judgment on the godly, it wasn't a judgment of going to heaven or hell. Okay. Okay. And then, and then, and then the thing about it is, it was short-lived for Christians. If you do the research on this, short-lived. But then he says, but then he says here in the verse, in verse. Uh, 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 18 he says and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear so he's talking about three different types of folk the righteous I mean he's talking about the, the God wait a minute let me look at it now to make sure he's talking about uh, the righteous the ungodly and the sinner. And we can fall in there anywhere. 
Okay? Because I'm finding out, man, I'm telling you, I'm finding out that God can pass judgment on people, and I've seen it done, and to keep people from going to hell, God will take them home. You don't believe that, do you? You don't believe that. Because you can, you, I'm, telling you I'm telling you, man, because you can, ha you can have Christ as your Savior and be caught up in some stuff that will take you to hell and God, in all of his infinite wisdom, will take you home to keep you from going to hell. That's not that, that, I mean, that, that's how much wisdom he has. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we got to sometimes watch the decisions, watch those, the, that conduct, and the way we behave is conduct now. And then some of the decisions that we make can cause us, I mean, cause the judgment of God to come upon us. Ask me where it's at in the scriptures. Go to with me the book of Jonah. Go with me to the book of Jonah. And I pray that you know about the, the, the passage of scripture on Jonah. Okay, I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago about, you know, how God, how God sent the Bible. Let, 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 let me read it. And it, it ain't, I, I'm going to read a little bit just to help you out. Uh, yeah, I can, I can, I can read this right here and, and, and just, and, and you know, just are you in Jonah chapter one? Uh, uh, I got one, Amen. Okay, we got all these Bibles in here now. Somebody got to have to get them besides two people. Hello, hello, somebody. It says in chapter one. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry. Against it for their wickedness is come up where before me. Now, every time you see wickedness in the Bible, in most cases, judgment is going to follow. Okay, he said that he said their wickedness has come up before me. He says, but Jonah rose to flee unto Tarsh from the presence of the Lord. Okay. Now Jonah decides I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna listen to what the Lord telling me to do. I'm gonna go my and do my own thing anyway. Hello. So now watch this. Now so he and the president of the Lord, and he went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarsh, so he paid the fare there and he went down to it and he to go to the, go with them to Tarsh from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord, now watch this. Here's the judgment. <laughs> but the Lord sent out a great wind in the sea. That there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. So because Jonah made a decision that he was not going to listen to God. God says my judgment is coming. Hello somebody. Yeah, yeah. My judgment is coming. Do you see it? And, 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 and to sum it all up, uh, the Bible says that. You know, Jonah caused the people to throw him overboard and, and a great fish, the Bible says, swallowed Jonah up. And he was in a, how long, how many days was he in that great fish? Three days. Okay. Even Jesus came behind in the, in the gospels and said, just like Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, so will the son of man be in the belly of the earth for how many days? Three days. Okay. It's something significant about three. What's so significant about three? It's life. So God will give you three days to come back to life. <laughs> Just a small nugget. So anyway, what happens to Jonah is um, he makes a decision. He cries out in the belly of the whale. The Bible said after he cried out, the fish spits him up, vomits him out, vomits him out on the shore. Why did he vomit out in the water? Huh? He could have drowned. But God in all his infinite wisdom because he repented, what did God do? Gave him another chance. Come on, he didn't. He was already saved. Woo, glory. Gave him another chance, right? And the, then the Bible said, if you keep reading the story, that the, the journey that was supposed to take him three days, amen, to take him three days to 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 go around and and and, and cry out against that great city of Nineveh, he done it in one day. So don't tell me what you can't do. Hey Amen. You got to stop me. You know, last week we talked about the fact that, you know, people didn't want to be committed to God. So they made excuses on why they did not want to follow Christ. Hey Amen. We're going to look. It, this, this, this is just tied to the last week's message about being committed to God. God wants all of us. He wants all of us. 
This is not no hokey pokey. You don't put one foot in and have one foot in the world. Amen. You can't live for Christ today and tomorrow I decide I want to do my own thing. If you want to see the judgment of God come in your life, let me go. Can I show it to you? Can I, can I show you where this, you know, living a lukewarm life makes God sick? Okay, look at Revelation chapter 3. You look at Revelation chapter 3. Y'all, I think y'all pushing me a little bit. Somebody hungry. I ain't heard your stomach growl yet, but you're hungry. And you ain't hungry for the word either. Come on, somebody. So listen to this right here. The Bible says in Revelation 3.15, he said, I know thy works, that thy art hot, hot, neither hot nor cold. He said, but I wish that thou would hot or cold. He said, but so then, because thou art lukewarm, okay, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you or spew you out of my mouth. So in other words, when you when a person, we didn't try to, we're gonna try to get too too graphic here, but 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 but, but when a person is sick, something don't agree with them, what do they do? They throw up. You want to make God throw up with your life? You want your life to be a testament? You want somebody to look at your life and say, now that's God. <laughs> Hello, hello. If you if you don't like you, other people won't either. Hey Amen. Come on. You're the only you we have. The reason a lot of people can't love others, they don't love them. They don't love themselves. Come on, talk to me. I love me. Can't nobody beat me loving me but me. I'll be good to me. Amen. I will not let ministry kill me. Hello. Hey Amen. Come on. If I take a Sunday off, I ain't going to hell. Amen. Y'all talk back to me. Y'all take Sundays off, don't you? Y'all take Sundays. Is that fair to me? Yeah, but uh, you just got finished saying that if God called you, you know, in the will of God, if you have the will of God, judgment come. Did it come for you? Ain't it amazing how people can put the life of the preacher under the microscope? But they forget that everything starts with them. Ain't that amazing? Ain't it amazing how the Bible... See, because God is a just God. He's just. Everything that, you know, this this word, one God, one, one I mean, this, this word, one size, fit everybody. He don't adjust his word for any of us. Come on. He came and walked the earth himself and he kept the word. Did he step outside of the parameters of the word? Why do we do it? Why do we do it and think because we do it, no consequences are going to follow? Anybody? I'm talking about? Come on, I mean, come on now. Anybody? So why are we so quick to point out everybody else's faults? Holy Ghost talking to me. Point out everybody else's faults and I can't see my own. Talk to me. Come on now. It's amazing, husbands and wives, we can see each other. Come on, so clearly. I know my wife knew all my faults. And I knew all of hers. And mostly she probably didn't know all of them, but she knew some of them. But then we get angry with each other and we want to start bringing up the faults. What's up, God? You're God now in my life? Hello. So, so, so now, now, now I don't got into my conduct. Now my conduct is really showing because I found out that situations and, and situations show up in my life that show me still what's in me needs to come out of me. Hey Amen. I'm serious. God ain't gonna let us get by with nothing. I told you that situ- there, there, there's parts of this word uh, and part things in us that the word ain't touched yet, and it's just a matter of T I M E. Amen. Come on. God, if God going to transform us or, or conform us into the image of his son, then there's a lot of changing that we still going to have to do. Remember I told you last week we can't be finger pointers? Because I found out that when you point your finger, you got three pointing back to you. Come on, go to the book of Genesis with me. This thing all started in the beginning. Look at Genesis. I know you're saying what chapter. Look at Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Are you there? 
Well, the Bible says that it came to pass, verse 1, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto men. It says that the sons of God, when the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, they took they took them wives of all which they chose. And the, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, says for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be how many years? 120 years. Now, this right here was right before the flood. Okay? So people teaching you that our life is still 120 years, they're off. I think it's in Psalms 90. You'll see what God promised us, 3 score and 10, 80 in strength. Okay. Drop down with me and look at verse 5. That's where I'm trying to get to. I probably should have started there. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God and, and, it, and it repented the Lord and made him sorrowful that that the Lord had that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I had made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I understand that we're still I understand that this dispensation that we're under is grace. But God's judgment still is invited when I when I make wrong certain wrong decisions in my life, or if my conduct is not according to His word. I can't I can't do certain things and not expect the judgment of God to show up. Amen. God is not looking for us to be perfect yet. The Bible said, "When He that is perfect shall appear, then when He comes, we shall be like Him." Amen. And so the Bible talks about we ought to be now striving for perfection. Amen. The more you live, the more closer, or the more you ought to be looking like Christ. Amen. Not like, not, not what he looked like, but his character. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We don't know what Christ looked like, but we're trying to uh, 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 copy his character. Amen. Okay. Act like he act. Talk like. Look, because the Lord gave me this right here. He said, uh, "My walk." My talk should verse, uh, my, my talk and my walk should come together and look like each other. I shouldn't be quoting a lot of scriptures and all this. Hello, that's my talk. But my lifestyle, my walk don't match what I'm talking about. You got a lot of people that do that. Amen. I can, I can quote the Bible from front to back, but I don't live none of it. That's what Satan, that's what, that's, that's how Satan is. He know the word. Do you think he's going to live it? If he lived the word, what would happen? Woo, he'll get saved. But that ain't going to happen. Amen. Okay. So, you, did you see this right here? You see you, you see this right here? That the wickedness of man, what did it bring? It brought the judgment of God. Okay? And once the judgment was passed, on, you know, I mean, these, they, they, I mean, really think in your mind now. Let, 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 me, let me give you what I got here. After God spoke and said that he would destroy man, he didn't move immediately. Think about this now. He didn't move immediately. He gave them 120 years to repent. Didn't he? Okay, because Noah's message was, get yourself in order, it's going to rain. Boy, they probably laughed him to scorn. Rain? We ain't never seen no rain. And you talking about building a cruise ship? And then somebody asked me the other day, man, they asked me, said, uh, uh, how many people do you think could have got on that boat? I said, as many as possible. Listen to this now. Just because the people got on the boat, just because you get it, get, just because you become a, a member of a ministry, don't mean you saved. And they, and, and they were thinking that just because you got on the boat, yeah, you've been saved from the flood, but what about your soul? We got to do more than just get in, just, just get in, get, get your name on a membership roll. You got to give your life to the Lord. Amen. So somebody asked me the question: How many people you think could have fit on that on, on the ark? I said, well, if God gave him the dimensions, then I think all the people that needed to get on there could have got on there. But it's, it's sad now because there was only eight people that got on that ark. And then people said, well, you know, that's, that was just Noah's ministry. Man, really? That was his family. Yeah, it was three levels. It was three levels on the ark. Amen. All right. All right. So watch this now. They gave him a twenty. They gave him hundred and twenty years to report to repent. 
There's a difference in repenting and lamenting. Do you know that? To lament means to be sorrowful about something crying, but you don't make a change. But to repent means to ask God to forgive you for the wrong that you've done and then turn from it and not go back to it. Oh, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm reading something now. And it's so good to me. And it's coming out of the book of James chapter 1. And it's talking about double mindedness. Oh Lord. It's talking about double mind. I've been studying this thing about six months. And I'm telling you, it's out of a book called Unshakable. Okay? And it talks about the fact that uh, 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 this man began to, start, when he started, when he started, you know, in the introduction, he began to talk about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And this is what you got a lot of times in people. You don't know what you're going to get out of them. You don't know if you're going to get the Hyde or Jekyll. Because they're double-minded. They're, they're, see, because the Bible says a double-minded man, that's a man with two souls. It is. They're double-minded. You don't know what you're going to get. You know, I'm telling you now. Okay. Because of the thing, what he began to talk about was you know, so many people in, in, in the body of Christ are psychotic. Psychotic. Yeah, and you say you see it, man. You and and, and I'm gonna tell you, man. That's why I like to study a lot of stuff. You know, just just, just my own for my own info. You know, because I'm gonna tell you something. You know, the enemy studies us, so you're gonna have to study some of the stuff that he, you know, he's sending out and putting on folk. He ain't casting no spells. He's sending out demons. Yeah. Person that with personalities come demons, amen. And we ain't got no business with no that's what Dr. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Howard they were split personalities, that's what they are. They're split personalities. You don't know what you're dealing with with folks, man. Man, people, I'm telling you, people crazy now. That's why I don't, I don't mess with folk. Joker, and Joker, pull up, up you know, pull up behind me in the car. I might look up in the rearview mirror and they're trying to get around y'all. Just pull over and let them by. You in a rush. If I mess around and, and say something to him the wrong joke, I might pull a gun and shoot me. I don't know. That's what we're getting to. You know what? You know, people with road rage crazy. They'll blow your brains out and still go to work. They don't care. They, they listen to this now. So, so it's a difference in repenting uh, and lamenting and, and, and repenting. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, but he preached the same message. It's going to rain. This reminds me of how God is, is, is really moving in the church today. His messages he's sending, they're not changing. He wants us to be devoted to him, committed to him. He wants us to become one with him. He don't want us to keep falling and getting up. It's okay if you fall and get up, but he don't want us to keep doing that. That means we ain't learning nothing. I'm telling you now. Listen. He says, in regards to where you go, if the truth has been preached, the truth is going to keep hitting you. So a lot of times we just keep trying to duck and dodge and go from place to place. Hey Amen. The truth is the truth. I don't care where you put it at. If it make you mad over there, it's going to make you mad over here. Because I don't think we're going to give you over here is the B-I-B-L-E. I promise you. And this word tears me up. Amen. Because a lot of times I, I might find myself saying the wrong thing, saying, saying the right thing the wrong way. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. I ain't backing up. I ain't scared of nobody. So listen to them. So God was grieved in his heart that he made man. That's a shame there now. He made man for what? Fellowship. Who's that? Yeah. Well, that, that, that's the first thing. But see, but see, Adam didn't have to worship him. Because Adam, uh, Adam was perfect. So he created us to he created us to worship him, right? But God wanted God just wanted fellowship. It wasn't that he was out of stuff to do. You know, a lot of people come up with a lot of good ideas, and they ain't got nothing to do with God. You know, I mean, no one did, he didn't just think about you know what? I ain't got nothing to do. I think I'll just build art. Okay. You know how a lot of times we try to just find something to do? You know, I ain't got nothing to do. I think I'll just take the weekend and go to the beach and miss church. Let me stop. <laughs> Woo! Because you, know, you know that's the way we think. You know that, right? You know, but the truth of the matter is, 
You didn't say you were going to go to the beach and miss work. Emoji. <laughs> you didn't say that. Didn't say, didn't, didn't say I think I'll take the Sunday and miss church. Why, why would you want to miss something that's keeping you alive? You know. <laughs> I mean, really. It amazes me how people, the enemy got us. You know, he tried to, he tried to, he tried to trick us. You know, you ain't got nothing but Sunday off, so you might as well go on the rest. You know you died. You know, you know you died. And he, he ain't going to tell you now after you miss church Sunday afternoon that he's going to start tormenting you. didn't go, did you? <laughs> Anybody ever felt that way? Because, you know, I mean, especially when you're out of place and you didn't go, you ain't got nothing to hold you up. Now I'm going to snatch you. I'm going to snatch it in your underwear off you now. <laughs> yeah, because I understand, man. And and, 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 uh, and I know you probably ain't going to like this, but we need to start going back to Wednesday night Bible teaching. Hello. No, 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 no. I'm telling y'all now. Now we do this. Now y'all better come. Y'all have me over if you want to. Y'all come over here and I'll, to, I'll tear this place up inside. <laughs> now, if you're working now, that's different. But don't, not every week now. Okay? I work Wednesday. Wednesday evening. I work. <laughs> Anyway, but, but, but actually the, the reason I'm saying this is because um, you don't drive your car all week unless you just fill up and just keep passing the gas station. You know, you know, every now and then, what do you do? Huh? You feel you pull in and fill up, right? Well, I mean, put gas in is what I'm saying. So it's the same thing with your spiritual life. You know, for the most part, well, I'm already reading every day. That's good, but that still ain't enough. That ain't enough. But we need to come in and be empowered by what God is saying to add to what you're getting. You don't never say that when you go back to the, the, the buffet twice. I'm full after the first plate. Really? All right. So anyway, let's get back over here. He was grieved in his heart. Now, oh, God was grieving his heart. He made man. In other words, his creation had brought a reproach to him. Anytime we bring a reproach to God, judgment's coming. Because the Bible says when we start bringing a reproach to the kingdom, it's like crucifying him or putting him back on the cross all over again. We bring him to an open shame. Doing crazy stuff. And people saying, you should you say? Because how you acting right now? You cussing and fussing? Okay. Woo. Whenever you feel like you want to act like the devil... And we're supposed to be saved. It makes God feel the same way toward us. It grieves him in his heart. And then the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, grieve not the Holy Spirit. You know, we can grieve. Look, look, check it out for me. 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, I think, uh, uh, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Help me out here. We got time. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Didn't it say up, up above that, pray without ceasing, 17? Did it say that? Why we ain't praying? Hey, have you ever found it hard to do the things of God when it's time to do it? You're making a sense. You know, I'm going to read tonight. And then you get home and... No, in, the, in most cases, you're watching that TV, that one-eyed devil. And I'm telling you, somebody, you know, somebody, somebody tell me, man, I tell you, I said, look, everything on TV now is perverted. If you haven't noticed lately, most all episode shows are homosexual. Same sex, a whole lot of, I'm telling you, a whole lot of same sex shows on. And we sit right there and watch it. We, we don't turn. How about putting it on the gospel station? Well, I can't find nobody on TV to watch. Well, it's better than watching the same sex. Because what you do is you open yourself up for a lot of spirits to come. I tell you about the gates. Watch the gates. Watch what you hear. Watch what you watch what you say. Watch what you hear. Watch what you see. Hello. I'll tell you about the five gates. We ain't going there now. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let, let's keep moving. It's time out for making excuses for our wickedness. The Bible says, can I give you the scripture? All sin, all unrighteousness is sin. Everything that ain't of God is sin. You know what you're doing. Hello. Yeah. But even, I mean, 
even people you don't like. Well, they my enemies. Well, the Bible said, love your enemies. Did it say, did it say bless them? Yeah, but you don't know. I do know. I know I got some people don't like me. Hey, that's their problem. I'm not giving them. A, I'm not. I'm not giving them a a reason not to like me. Are you understanding what I mean? I'm not trying to go around them either. I'm not. Ain't no such thing as love them from a distance or feed them with a long handled spoon. No such scriptures. If you find it, show it to me. Got something for you too. Glad I said it. Remember I've been telling you about the, all these different versions of the Bible that you're using? See this? Defending the King James Version. I promise you, when you look in this, you see you too? When you look in this, there's a lot of stuff that's being omitted out of the Bible with, with all those different versions besides the King James. I promise you. I'm telling you. Amen? These are about $30 in the store. I know you ain't going to get one. I'm not running you no copies off either. I might go to hell for that. What's that called? Uh, there are copyright rights against that, right? Sometimes we do it, though, don't we? Hello, YouTube. Sometimes we do it. You, y'all know y'all do that. Come on, man. You, you, you know, you, you take pictures with your phone or stuff, you, and then you send it to other people. Okay. What is that? Sin. Sin. <laughs> Because you know to do right. James 4, 17. Them that know to do good, do right. And do not do it. It is it's sin. And the wages is the payment of sin. The wages of sin. The payment of sin is death. Something going to die. And, you know, because so many times we're thinking that just because I said I'm going to die. No, something in your life going to die. Something going to die. Well, think about that. Because the Bible said that, you know, Adam... God told Adam and Eve, do not touch the tree, do not eat of that tree of the good of good and evil, the tree of knowledge. Don't eat of it. The curiosity got the best of them. And they ate it anyway. When you start staring at something, looking at it, your curiosity, it gets higher and higher. And after a while, you know what you say? I can't take it. I got to have it. Hello, you don't look at that man long enough? You don't look at that woman long enough. And then most day, most times you see them from afar. Ask me what I mean. Because you don't know nothing about them. You get that joker home. You get the cussing. Okay. <laughs> so it's time out for making an excuse while we're here. God has made a way of escape for all of us. He has provided for us, all for all of us, that everything we need to endure until he returns. Everything. There's no excuses why we die in sin. I'm talking about die now. We live in sin. There's no excuses. As saved people, our life of sin should be ending. Amen. When, when you come in, when you come into the kingdom, you're supposed to start sancti suppose, suppose to start sanctifying yourself. Sanctify means to set yourself apart from the world. What's, the, what's in the world? Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Every sin in the earth falls under those three points. Everything you can think of. I promise you. Look, don't think that you're the only one that had to endure the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It's the same thing that Jesus endured in the wilderness. Amen. Oh, Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost. Every sin... That we commit started with a temptation. <laughs> Look, it, it wasn't the temptation that was that that that, that causes me to, to sin. It was something connected. Amen. See, it was uh, uh, if you go to Romans chapter seven, you know Paul began to talk about you know every time I try to do good, evil is present. He said, the thing that I didn't want to do is the thing I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall save me from this body of death? And then he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, that's. Well, hey, when you come into the kingdom, when you still do, when you still do things that you shouldn't do, yeah. Amen. 
But when you find yourself doing those things, you repent from them and not go back to them. Amen. Because the thing, because here, here's the thing, you get so many people preaching in these last days stuff that you want to hear. Amen. And what I want to hear ain't going to help me get where I need to go. Yeah. Amen. I need that hammer. The Bible said this word is a hammer for a hard head, stiff necked people. That's what it's for. And we need to get, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the Panthers got a, a good cliche. And I'm going I'm to use it when I preach. Keep pounding. <laughs> pounding this word. <laughs> Come on, tell you, man, this truth, this truth, when it comes, I'll tell you what it's going to do first. It's going to make you angry. And I'm going to tell you something. When people preaching the truth, it'll cause you not to want to come around. Amen. Now, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the true conviction of the Holy Spirit from the words that you're speaking now. I ain't saying because you're beating people across the head with the word. Amen. Because this word is just not for all y'all. It's for me, too. And everybody listening on YouTube. Hello. All right. So, <clears throat> it's not enough just coming to the house of God and hear the word. We must apply what we're hearing. Okay, let me give you a scripture. James 1.22 James 1.22 Because we think it's enough Man, I, I went to church this morning Why are you still raising hell then? Huh? If you came to church this morning and heard the word Why are you still doing what you're doing? Because the word is, he, he said I sent the word to heal them That word heal means to deliver us Set us free Are you, are you at 22? Now look, look at the, what the word now He says be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. You came to hear this morning and God spoke something to you and it hit you right where you hit the nail right on the head. You just heard it, but you didn't change nothing. Hello. Come on, this word is designed to change us from the inside out. Amen. Some people don't want to change. Isaiah 58 and 1. Are you there? The Bible says, cry loud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. That's why we meet here on Sundays. To be empowered and to be changed. Amen. You know, the, the, the rich young ruler asked the question, how can I, what do I need to do now to get eternal life? He had all the riches. He had all, all that money he had. Jesus told him, go sell everything you got and just give it to the poor. And what did the Bible say he done? He dropped his head first. He said, man, you're going to make me get rid of my God, which is my money. Because he, because the Bible said, he, he said in the commandments, have no other God before me. Right? There's no time for stroking people's flesh <laughs> hey, and telling them what they want to hear. As preachers, teachers, we have a charge from God to live right, that's the first thing, and preach the true gospel when the people want to hear it and when they don't. And that's and I gave it to you last week, that's the same scripture there. 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 4. Make sure you write it down. It says, be instant in and out of season. Preach the word. Hello. Don't back up. Yeah, because when you're preaching the word, the only thing God going to defend you on is the word that you preach. All this throwing off and stuff you're doing, don't do it. Because God going to step to the side and he's going to lie to them jokers. They run over you. But when you come with the word, of the, 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 God, the true gospel, the true word, God going to defend his word. Yeah. Yeah. You know what You know what the word apologetics mean? Somebody said it means apologize. I think I asked that before. Apologetics means to, 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 to contend for the faith. 
to hold up this, this, this gospel. Amen. We ain't got to fight for God. God can fight for himself. But our job is to, 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 to hold the word of God up, the bloodstained banner. Don't back up. Tell them the truth when they don't want to hear. Amen. If they stink, tell them they stink. Sin stinks in the nostrils of God. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving here. So it says, uh, uh oh, Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. My God, where you at, Jose? Here we go. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. Are you there? Look at this right here now. It says, for, it's the, look at verse 7. They are all hot as an oven and have divided their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that called, uh, called unto them. Ephraim have Ephraim he have mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. In other words, God is not looking for a half-baked people. See, a lot of times when we when we find ourselves in hot in, in the oven or hot situations, we don't like to stay in until God finish. We want to come out half-baked and we ain't ready. You remember the old folks used to say, ah, uh -uh, don't walk in the house. You're gonna make my cake fall. Anybody remember that? Oh, y'all didn't have no ovens. We didn't need they baked them on the top of the stove. So, so, so this is what God said, man. He wants us to stay in, he wants us to stay in the fire. When the Bible says he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, do you know what the fire is for? For the purifying. Fire changes the appearance of everything in touch. Ain't nothing wrong with God making you ashes, but you'll be beautiful. Amen. Ashes don't talk. Dead men don't talk. They just listen. Amen. So that's what he was saying. He don't want nobody. God is sick of the church being half and half. God is sick of the sick and tired of the church making excuses for willful sin. God is not asking us to do what uh, 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 we're not capable of doing. He'll never ask you that. He'll qualify you if you be still long enough. He will. If he called you to do a certain uh, do a certain assignment, all you gotta do is let somebody develop what's in you. Yeah, you may you said this morning, Proverbs 18, 18, 16. It says a man uh, uh, a man's gift should make room for him and bring him before great men, bring him before kings and mayors and hey Amen. You ain't got to put no billboard out here. We need money. Cause I found out when you do God's work the right way. Then God will send the people with the money. Or he'll send the money. He'll send Churches doors and church doors are closing because people ain't doing what God called them to do right. Amen. If God don't tell you to build a church, don't build it. You're trying to compete and look good and boy, they doing it bad big over there. Look at the church over there. Man, that's a million dollar cathedral. Ain't nobody in it. Is that crazy? Is he coming back for a, is he coming back for a big cathedral? He's coming back for we are the church. We're the church he's coming back for. We are the ones that's called the church. It's not the building. Ain't nothing wrong with building a new building if you can afford it, but my God. At the expense of the people, and you want this big salary? You don't want to be full. You know what? You know something? Somebody asked me, are you full time? I said, do you think I do you think you can pass the church part time? It's a full time assignment. I don't stop answering the phone after five o'clock. I just don't answer it when I'm asleep. If I hear it, I will. Okay. But there's some stuff. Most of our problem is is we just don't want to we just don't want to do what God calls us to do. We have no problem with complying with the requirements of our jobs. Why do you keep using jobs? Because it's something that we're devoted to. It is really something we're devoted to. Man, we spend more time getting our job and doing the stuff of, of, of man than we do God. Lay your clothes out on uh, all through the week. I, some people hide their clothes from Monday, from Monday to Friday. For, Monday, for the first part of the week, for the whole week. Amen. They do. Anyway, I, I know it's upsetting you. But it's going to bless you after a while. 
If they tell you to wear steel toe boots and a hard hat, you have no problem. If we only <laughs> we only have a problem when it comes to, and I quote, the invisible God, the things of that invisible God we don't see. That's what that's, that's where our problem come in at. Who is the pastor to tell us to come to prayer at five o'clock in the morning? Who do you think he is? Who do you think he is? Can I share something with you? Can I really share something with you? If you don't hear your pastor, you are not hearing the voice of God. I know you don't like it. Amen. Because the Bible says that I will, uh, uh, Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So if God placed you and you say God sent you and God placed you here, then you got to hear the pastor. You got to hear God through the pastor. I ain't saying God won't tell you nothing. Why that thing cutting off? You know, somebody moves something back there. All right, now I heard that compressor kick in. Did you got something back there moved? Amen. So, so the thing is, come on, man. God put you here. God wants you to hear to hear Him through the man of God. I don't like the pastor. You call somebody on the phone and talk about you don't like. I don't like the pastor. If somebody call you talking about the pastor, you ought to tell them, look, you ain't got nothing to talk about my pastor. If you got something to say to him, call him. I told you some stuff in me. That still need to come out of me. But I wanted to come out the right way. <laughs> can, can, can we be honest? Do you think you finished? Are you done? I mean, man, because we, I mean, we, we, we need to be fighting through here together. You know, the only fight we should be fighting is the good fight of faith. We ought to be out of the book of Jews says contend for the faith. Yeah, fight for what's right. Amen. I want anybody to talk about you. If they called you ugly, I knew you were ugly. I said, man, don't, don't call them. Don't, don't, don't say that now. It's my brother. It's my sister. Don't say that. I mean, you're right. But don't say it. <laughs> I mean, sister in Christ, I don't mean. <laughs> come on, we got to come on. I am my brother's keeper. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Let's keep moving. We're going to get out of here. Listen to this right here. Some of us don't fear God. Mm. We don't believe that he's a God that can wipe us out at any moment. We don't believe that. We just only believe, for the most part, that God took people's life in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament only. That's all we believe. Hello, somebody. Do you hear me? But for the most part, we don't believe that God takes lives, took lives in the, in the New Testament. We don't believe that. Because we just think a lot of that stuff was just under the law. But if you look in Acts chapter 5, when the church started first, first began, Ananias and Sapphira for lying to the Holy Ghost. Fell dead right in the church. Amen. God didn't kill them. They, they conduct. Look at look go to Acts chapter 5. I want to show you something. I'm gonna show you something for all you people come in late. Oh, I mean uh woo. Speak, Holy Ghost. I want to show you something. Y'all believe the Bible, don't you? Okay. Y'all believe the Bible? All right. Look at, look, look at Acts chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, they sold a possession. Right? And they kept back part of the money, part of the price, his wife also being privately to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at McNeil's feet. The apostles' feet. You see that? Watch this now. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thy heart the light of the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price? He said, while it remained, was it not thine own? And after thy sold it, was it not thine own power? Why have thou conceived this, conceived this thing in thy heart that thou have not lied unto men, but who, who he lied to? Lied unto God. So Ananias, hearing these things, these words, he fell down and gave up the ghost. Okay? And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose 
winded him up and carried him out and did what to him? And they buried him. Now watch this now. This is for all you people that come in late. About the space of three hours when his wife came in the church not knowing what was done. See? <laughs> no, but she came in three hours later. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for as much. And she said, yay, for as much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that you agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Uh, behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and they shall carry thee out. Then she fell down, she fell down straightway at his feet, yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in, found her dead, and carried her forth, and buried her by her husband. So when people tell you, oh, God don't take lives in the New Testament, God will wipe you out. He didn't do it because he didn't have nothing to do. He done it because of their conduct. What they said, they lied. So for all you liars, make sure you got life insurance. Okay. All right. Is that all right? Now watch this. Now God's getting ready to, he get ready to manifest himself to the church and be honest. He's doing it right now. He's manifesting himself. He is. Death, I'm going to tell you something, man. Death is in the land. It is. Death is in the land. Death, man, is, the spirit of death is always around. It's always around. Okay? Now, uh, like I said, you know, sometimes making wrong decisions bring the judgment of God. Right? And, and, and then our conduct. I'm going to give you a remedy. Can I give you a remedy? Somebody say remedy. Look at 2 Corinthians 7, 14. We quote this thing all the time. 2 Chronicles. I'm sorry. Did I say Corinthians? I'm sorry. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Are you there? I'm getting there. All right. If my people, now if you belong to him, you got to belong to him now. What you're called by my name, the first thing you got to do is what? You should humble yourself. Okay? And pray. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my face, his face, not mine, and turn from their wicked ways Said, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, they heal the land means to deliver them. Okay? That's the remedy when you find yourself. But judgment is still going to come now, but you cut down on the judgment. Did you know that? There's some things that I've done in my life. I, re I, I repented as God to forgive me. He didn't give me the full, he didn't give me the full effect, but he still whooped my rear end. Hey Amen. Be careful how you say that now, because your tongue might slip over. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Cause, cause what's in you come out you now? See, I don't cuss. So I ain't got to wear mind flipping over. <laughs> Some of y'all that's, who that slipped out? No, it didn't slip out. It was in there. It's, it's a seed. It need, it need to come out, but not like that. Remember I told you something? You need to come out, but not like the wrong way? Yeah. See, the more you get that word in you, the more God begins to flush the stuff out. Wickedness come out of me by me getting the word of God in me. Because I'm telling you, that word will transform you, man. It'll do some stuff for you that you don't know when it happened, but you just know it happened. Amen. So we got to be careful, man. We got, I'm telling you, please, you know, change your life. Don't invite, the, don't invite the judgment of God to show up. Commit yourself. I mean, you know, don't 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 say I'm committed to God and try to live around people the right way. Then you're getting your private time and you're doing all kind of stuff that God don't accept. Yeah, it's what you do in private is that's going to happen. It's going to show up publicly. Amen. You dressing up like a man and you're a woman privately. Otherwise, you're going to leave something on. Amen. Right? Dress them like a woman and you're a man. Otherwise, you're going to come out with a lipstick. How you doing? I'm fine. What's wrong with your lips? Oh, that's Kool-Aid. Nah, okay, Kool-Aid. All right. So, so many times we forget that God is, 
is the only one that can help us no matter what our problem is. Uh, uh, it could be spiritual, physical, but God is still the answer. Jesus, in other words, in the, for, the, for the day. So we must follow God's antidote in this passage to be reconciled to God. His antidote is humble yourself, pray. Come on, what's the other one? Y'all done forgot. My God. We, but I tell you, the enemy come to steal the word. Look, we should humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and then turn from evil. Amen. I told you, man, all sins start with temptation. Men, if you know you got a problem with women, stay away from them. Women, if you know you got a problem with that guy with that big back and the muscles in it, stay away from them. I mean, come on, if you like them tall, black and black and tall, stay away from them. Go walk, get around some midgets. <laughs> You gotta do what you, you gotta do whatever it takes to keep yourself free. Men, if you like, you know you like the women with the, the big trunks, stay away from them. Hey Amen. Come on. You like them petite? Stay away from them. Get around some big mamas. I mean, come on, well, you you look, you know what tempts you. You know, if you like if you guys like a woman with big headlights. Okay, can we be real? I mean, because men, I'm telling you, men, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a real remedy. We are moved by what we see. Women are moved by what they hear. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Okay, that's gonna help you right there now. If you, hey, look, if you know that every time you go around this certain place, you see something you like, stay away from the place. Amen. You frequent the place. Stay away from the place. Yeah, stay away from that. I'm telling you. Women, if you know you like that man with that deep voice, he goes, hello, good morning. Stay off the phone. Yeah. Okay. So watch this now. So the, the antidote is, I gave you the antidote. Humble, pray, seek, turn. Right? Let that stay in your mind. Humble, pray, seek, turn. How you doing? Humble, praise, eat, turn. Doing all right? Humble, praise, eat, turn. It's going to help you. <laughs> do it for 30 days. I'm trying to help us, man. I do. I'm going to tell you something. I stay away from places that tempt me. Amen. I don't go. I, look, I don't drink beer, alcohol. I don't go around the beer cooler. I mean, really, man. You know, something tempts you. Ah, you better not give me that cigarette. I'll smoke it. Okay. <laughs> God is not interested in how much we cry. He ain't. You can keep making the same mistake and you crying, but you ain't asking God to deliver you. Oh, I'm sorry. Right back the next day. What you doing? Okay. <laughs> He's not interested in where we live, what we drive. He's interested in our heart condition. God wants us to give our heart to him totally. He ain't looking for no weekend lovers. He ain't looking for visitation rights on Sundays like child support. And we just come visit God on Sunday. That's the only time we visit him. We don't visit him through the week. We don't read no scripture. It's like a weekend warrior. It is. I mean, come on, man. Weekend warriors, when they go to uh, National Guard, just go to camp. I mean, go to drill what? Twice a month? Once a month? And two weeks on the summer? I mean, you come, if you hit and miss coming to church and you say, I love God, what's wrong with you? Something wrong with both of you. You love God. Come on, you're going to serve him. You're going to keep his commandments. Is that what the Bible said? You're going to treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah, you don't put, you don't stomp people. Go, you, you want somebody to stomp you and kick you? You don't do it to them. Galatians 6 1. 
Even if you see your brother fall, you don't beat him down. He said, if your brother's overtaken in a fall, you did a spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. It says, considering thy own self, you treat people the way you want to be treated. If it was you, I'm coming in now. I got five minutes. Coming in. Coming round the mountain. Listen to this. It is, it, is, it is in our heart to serve God. If it's in our heart to serve God, just like he told the children of Israel, you know, when you're serving God, you don't serve them with your mouth. He said the problem the children of Israel kept saying they served me with their lips, their heart was far from me. What did that mean? And you're talking a lot of talk, but your walk ain't matching nothing you're saying. I love God, but you drunk every weekend. Love God, but you're out there smoking that wacky weed. Yeah, people tell me, well, ain't nothing wrong with marijuana God made anyway. He made a lot of stuff. He made the stuff that make liquor with. Do you, you don't drink liquor? It's okay, right? I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm going to say this right. It's going to make a lot of sense to you. If you can't do it right now in the church service, then you shouldn't be doing it outside the church. Ain't that good? Keep your dress down and your pants up and your zipper zipped up if you ain't married. That's, that's plain. That's plain. He said adulterers and fornicators are, he didn't, the, the, the Bible said inherit the kingdom. I'm saying you're going to hell. Amen. That's, is that in the Bible? Go to Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 and you'll see the works of the flesh. Amen. You'll see the works of the flesh. Come on now. And if you find yourself in these you're a good candidate for the lake of fire. Can I show it to you? All right, look, let's go over there. Look at Galatians. Come on. I ain't bring my own Bible. This is the word of God here. Okay. This, this, this right here is what you call a, a, a plumb ball. This is a measuring rod. Okay. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 says, he says, for the flesh lusted after the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Yeah, and uh, they, these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would. It says, look at 19, I'm sorry. Yeah, look at 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, look at them. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditious heresy, heresies, envying, murdering, drunkenness, robbing, and such like. Of which I told you before, and I'll also tell you in time past, they which do such things shall not get in the kingdom. Do you see it? Did I write your Bible? You brought it with you, didn't you? Do you know what was in there? You carrying your own judgment in your hand. The reason I'm saying that is because you know we doing we doing these things. We ain't married to a joker. You ain't got no business kissing him. Oh Lord, have mercy! But you don't understand. He know God knows my heart. Can I show you something? Can I show you something about the heart? I'm gonna take you. Can I keep it with the word? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Is it verse 10? People kill me with this mess, man. But God know my heart. I'm going to show you what your heart is like. Oh, look at verse 9. You see it? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Do you see the heart? God knows my heart. How many people do you dare say that? I might not be doing what I'm supposed to do, but God know my heart. If he ain't in it, I know it's wicked. Hello? Ain't the way to work. God can be in my heart and I'm doing some of the things I'm doing now. I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about us. It's quiet now. I'm getting, I'm getting one amen. The same amen. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Let me quit then. Okay. The body of Christ have hoard on God long enough. Hoard on God. You Hoard on God. That means chasing other gods. You're putting other things before God. That means you're whoring. 
You know how I mean, you know how it is when they call you a whore in the world, right? It means you sleep around. So I mean you're sleeping around, you you chasing other gods on God, you're a whore. Say so you love God, right? Well, I don't see no evidence. If your name ain't written in the Lamb's Book of Life when you close your eyes on this side, I promise you, we are going to hell. Going to hell. Ain't no coming back, getting it right, changing. Oh, Lord! No. I'm serious. This, look, this thing is serious. We're getting ready to study something. And in one of the, the, the pamphlets I read, the man said, heaven is a one-shot deal. If you die and don't have Christ when you leave here, you know the rest of the story. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Listen to this now. It's time out for chasing all those gods that please our flesh. Mm. It's time to truly repent and turn back to God for real. This is the only true way back to God is true repentance. Not with what we say, but what we do. Our actions have to speak louder than our words. And I just I, I just pray that this really spoke to somebody's heart this morning. That's what I pray. I pray, man. I Look, I don't want to go to hell. Matter of fact, I ain't going to hell. I ain't going to hell behind no tail. Amen. I, I mean, really. Don't let, I'm telling you, don't let sin catch you out there. I promise you. And he went around here with no clothes on and showing everything. I'm telling you now. So my thing is, where are the older women that's supposed to show the one, the younger women how they should conduct themselves? Now you got the young women, they dresses all the way up to here. And pray, and pray God they don't drop nothing. They have to pick it up. They don't bend like a lady no more. They do. Oh! Y'all better talk to me now. I was going to start the other day, man. A woman dropped something. I said, Lord, man, I get it for you. <laughs> Jesus, please don't you get it. I get it. <laughs> don't drop nothing else. <laughs> hey, man, man. Man, I've been joking. I ain't got nothing on, man. Huh? Woo! Anyway. In my closing, if we don't change some things, the judgment of God is certain to happen. It's inevitable. It's certain. It's coming. I'm telling you. We are, we're coming. In some things we're invited. If you don't obey God, the judgment of God is going to show up. Watch some of the decisions that you make. I'm telling you. Look at Jonah. Jonah made that decision. Now, I'm going to do what I want to do. Whoop, there's the judgment of God. We're invited. Don't move too fast. Think about what you're doing. Amen. The judgment of God. Come on. Clap your hands.